had adopted a Shih Tzu from an all-breed rescue. And um, they didn't know much about the breed, and I thought, wow, why isn't there a Shih Tzu rescue in Michigan? And I looked online and, you know, trying to get information about the breed, and um, I asked them that question. Isn't there a Shih Tzu rescue in Michigan? And they said, no, there's not. How would you like to be our Michigan person? So that's how we got started. They're a very unique breed. They're, um, they're lap dogs. They're, you know, if people like somebody to, you know, if they want to have like a, a living, breathing stuffed animal, that's really a Shih Tzu. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Very attentive. They're um, cat-like in that um, they don't usually go tearing to the door barking at people. Um, sometimes when I come home they'll pick their head up and look at me. Sometimes not. But, um, you know, they're not uh, destructive or anything like that. They're just real, real nice dogs to have as house dogs. And they really like to um, wear clothes and be pretty, too. It's just the cutest thing. It's not the bell. Ring the bell. Yes. Come get it. Good girl. One of the biggest problems that would be great if people knew about is they are not good with young children at all. Um, they don't necessarily, you know, snap at the kids or bite, but they do like a lot of attention, as you can see. And um, when there's young kids around, the activity level and the noise level and the, oops, you know, someone else is getting attention and I'm not, will um, cause them to misbehave in the house and, you know, hide behind the furniture, have housebreaking accidents and things like that. In fact, probably 90% of the owner surrenders we get are for that reason. This is Jenny, and um, the Humane Society called us about Jenny. She was turned in as a stray, um, and I'm still wondering how someone lost their blind dog, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> um, they're not able to place her. She had to have major dental work, um, and the Humane Society can't do that kind of me uh, medical work, um, so they either have to euthanize the pets or they have to um, call a rescue to get them. So that's how we got her. We don't know how old she is or really anything else about her other than she's blind. Um, and we figure she's a senior, but she's just the sweetest little thing ever. This is Isaac. Um, <coughs> Isaac actually came from the same Humane Society. Uh, he was turned in as a stray also. He had an eye injury. Um, the eye needed to be removed immediately, and the Humane Society was unable to do it. Um, so they called, called me and said, can you come and get him, like, right now so you can have his eye taken out because we need to euthanize him if you can't. So I did. Um, he went through quite a bit. He uh, developed a huge infection from having the eye injury, which was, you know, had been festering for a while before he was taken in. Um, but he made it through, and we figure he's about five years old. He's very active and playful once he was, um, you know, all healed up and everything. And as I was telling you before, he likes to run around and wrestle and roll around with the puppy that we have here, and nobody else will. They're just too bothered by him. The goal was to try to raise the funds before we need them, and, and I think we're getting to that point. We do have a little bit of reserve now, but, you know, sometimes if we don't have the reserve, we just have to say, well, you know, we're going to have to worry about how to pay for this later. And yes, it definitely, it's gone on my credit card many a time.